So the Doppler effect, um, when you hear that, that phrase, that word, uh, a lot of people think of ambulances going by and uh, fire trucks going by. And, uh, <laughs> many of you students, um, when I asked you what it meant, just went woo, 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 uh, or made sounds. So the Doppler effect does have to do with, with sounds, and it's a, a great example is when something does drive by you. Um, but we can demonstrate it with something as simple as a tuning fork. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to hear this on the video. You should be able to hear something interesting. Oh, let me try that again. So what you should be able to hear is the frequency changing. Um, you might also hear the volume changing, that's because uh, as waves travel, their amplitude, uh, as they travel through real substances like air, their amplitude decreases, um, and what controls the volume of a sound is its amplitude. Frequency uh, of a sound, or the pitch, uh, is controlled by frequency of the wave. Um, so the Doppler effect. Uh, is about how this changes. Doppler effect is the apparent change in frequency uh, due to motion of the source relative to the observer. So when I was waving that tuning fork towards you, um, the motion of, of the tuning fork was changing uh, relative to you. Um, and this is why when you hear a fire truck coming towards you, it sounds, or a truck coming towards you, um, it will sound like And then when it goes by you, it's Yeah, so I'm just making strange sounds. Um, but it, you, the frequency will go up as it comes towards you, and down as it goes away from you, okay? So, as a result, there's two equations um, that we need for the Doppler effect. Um, we need uh, the uh, frequency that is being observed. This will be if it's moving away. Uh, the frequency being observed is gonna be equal to the velocity of the wave itself divided by the velocity of the wave itself plus the velocity of the source. Uh, and this is going to be multiplied by the frequency produced. Now I'll kind of walk through what this is saying. Uh, so here the frequency observed, uh, in the case when it is going towards you, is uh, going to be the velocity of the wave over the velocity of the wave minus the velocity of the source. So we're just going to flip one sign. And this will be multiplied by uh, the frequency produced. Okay, so what this means is this tuning fork produces, it's supposed to produce an E, okay? So if I hit this, and I just hold it, it'll produce an E. That is the frequency produced, okay? Whatever the original wavelength or original frequency is, um, that's frequency produced. Uh, now the velocity of the wave is almost always going to be one of two things. We're generally going to only work with sound, uh, and the velocity of sound uh, in air Roughly room temperature is about 330 meters per second. Uh, and the velocity of light uh, is the other type of wave work with, and that's 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Light is wicked fast. Um, so those would be the velocity of the wave. That's what goes in here, okay? However fast the wave itself travels. Then you add or subtract the velocity of the source from that. So when I was hitting this and wiggling it, waving it back and forth, the velocity of the tuning fork itself as it waves is what goes in here, velocity of source, okay? All of that put together gives you what frequency you will hear or see if it's, if it's light. Um, so even though it's producing a frequency of E, uh, if I hit it and I wave it, this is going to change the frequency that you hear, okay? So, you know, for a quick example, uh, we can say... Uh, suppose uh, I'm producing uh, a wave with a frequency 
of, let's say I'm producing a frequency of, I don't know, 300 hertz. Okay? Uh, and I want to, uh, and I'm, I want to know what frequency I'm going to observe if my uh, source is moving at 20 meters per second. Okay? Now let's say the velocity of the wave is sound uh, and will be uh, 330 meters per second. Okay? So to figure out what frequency is observed, you just plug all this stuff in. Um, so in this case, let's say it's moving, uh, let's say it's moving away from you. So it's moving away from you is the top equation, and you get frequency observed going to be equal to uh, the velocity of the wave, which is 330 meters per second, divided by 330 plus 20, so 350 meters per second, and you multiply that uh, by the frequency produced, which is 300 hertz. All right? Um, and then you just plug it in, and you get your observed frequency. Uh, so Doppler effect uh, is not too mathematically complicated. Uh, it's not too conceptually complicated. The only thing to make sure is that you're putting in the proper uh, values for the proper variables. Try to just keep straight in your head which, uh, you know, which velocity maps to which variable on here. Velocity of the wave is the one that the wave is traveling through the air at what speed. Velocity will always be one of these two, generally, if those are the ways you work with. Uh, and v-source will be however fast your, your hand is moving, uh, if you're waving a tuning fork. Uh, but otherwise, how fast whatever source is producing it is, is moving. Um, so that is a Doppler effect. Uh, if something is moving away from you, um, its frequency will become lower. And if something is moving towards you, its frequency will become higher. And you can see that because in the away case, uh, you're increasing the denominator, uh, which is going to decrease the frequency observed. And in this case, you're decreasing the denominator, which means you're going to increase uh, the frequency observed. Okay? That's the Doppler effect.